Hi everyone, this is Professor Gulia. First of all, I hope that everyone is doing well. I know that now may be an especially chaotic time. If there is anything I can ever help with um, in terms of any anything for this course, obviously, but also anything having to do with the coronavirus, I know that we might have, or probably do, have other obligations that we're trying to balance. Please, if anything comes up, please, please let me know. Um, all right, so, at this point, I've now finished looking at all of the four page rough drafts for our um, research papers. And I did write a little note to everyone, kind of just giving some very quick ideas of what to think about going forward, what to work on, or just how things are going in general. That's a way for me to start weighing in on how um, the papers are starting to look. So one of the things I wanted to do in addition to that was talk a little bit about quotes and using evidence. And this is a very quick way for me to take um, all of my thoughts based off of the, the rough drafts and kind of putting them on a single document and just boiling everything down to a couple of quick tips that we can hopefully use to think about and to revise our own papers. Um, so I'm going to call this somewhat <laughs> sillily uh, notes on quotes. All right, so these are based off of what I kind of noticed um, people were doing or weren't doing. Um, and, you know, so for a lot of us, we might already know these ideas. I'm just going to talk about them quickly just so that everyone's on the same page. So the first thing I want to say about quotes, and likely we already know this, the vast majority of us are already doing this, is that quotes are great. I'll do that with two exclamation points. So quotes are really, in my mind, the most effective way to make to get our point across, right? These give us the ability to unpack someone else's words, right? Whether they're talking about evidence or they're talking about a concept or idea, and we can unpack them in a way that supports our own idea. And at the foundation of, you know, using quotes, at least for me, is the trick of college writing. And I'll put this on here. So the major trick is that these papers use the words of others, right? We use experts, we use, um, you know, current events, whatever evidence helps us out. So we're using the words of others while also holding on to the writer's own idea, right? So this for me, and I'll put this in bold just so it kind of stands out, and I'll underline it too. This for me is the weird thing about research writing at the college level, but I think this is so important, right? We are using words of others, we're using quotes, but the idea is that we never lose control of our own voice, right? So in many ways, this sort of writing is about balancing voices. We have voices of others, and we have our own voice, and the goal is to, even when we have a quote, never lose our voice um, amongst everything, amongst all the quotes that we are included, including. All right, so quotes are great, um, but then the trick is trying to figure out how to balance using quotes with our own ideas. So now I want to talk very quickly, now that we've talked about those two things, I want to talk about where quotes go. All right, so, and this is just a way for us to be on the same page. So I want to give a couple of do nots. All right, so one of the things to keep in mind is that a quote should never be a thesis statement. And this is for a very specific reason, right? A thesis statement, and we um, likely all, all, all know this, um, a thesis statement is our position based on the evidence. It is our own idea. So as you are writing through the paper, this is what you are backing up. So if it is your own idea, it should be in your own words. And one of the ways that we can think about this sort of writing is as a 
fight for control, right? We want to constantly control the direction of our own paper. We want the writer to, as right readers, we want the writer to exert control over the direction of the argument. All right, now, because that is true, there are a couple other things that we can keep in mind. So a quote should never be a thesis statement because a thesis statement is your idea, not someone else's. And then a quote should also... You should never have a quote as a topic sentence. Now, a topic sentence is um, the first sentence of a body paragraph, and it is really the writer's chance to push their own argument. A topic sentence should, in many ways, capture the idea of that body paragraph. So because that is true, and because the idea of that body paragraph is the writer's and no one else's, that topic sentence should not be a quote. So if you have this, the fix is super easy. And it is to add another one to three sentences. You can play with that um, in terms of you know being a range. One to three sentences before the quote, right? And these sentences should um, capture your own idea in that paragraph, right? So it's about control. You want to, if it is your argument and you are backing it up, you want to control that argument. So um, a quote should never be a thesis statement and it should also never be a topic sentence. The other thing I will say, and this is so, this is done so frequently, um, is that a quote should never be the last sentence of a body power of a paragraph. This is for the exact same reason. So ideally, if you look at a body paragraph, it will start in the voice of the writer because it's announcing that writer's own idea and what they're going to write about in that paragraph. And also the body paragraph should end in their own idea. So a good kind of rule of thumb Um, is to have quotes somewhere in the middle. And these, this is for a couple of very quick reasons, right? So reason number one is, and I mentioned this before, every paragraph should start with the writer's own idea. Right, whatever the idea of that paragraph is. So because of that, it sh the um, quote should not be the first sentence. Now, reason number two is that if you put a quote at the end of a paragraph, and I'll put this down here, I'll remember to type it. So if you put a quote at the end of a paragraph, you can't slow down to analyze it, right? Because of how paragraphs work, you need to immediately move to a new paragraph, right? Because the next sentence is the topic sentence of the next body paragraph. So your quote should probably be somewhere in the middle. All right, and if you have any questions about any of that, feel free to let me know. The next thing I want to talk about is the quote sandwich. This is a super easy form. If you ever want outside sources about how this works, I have a bunch of articles, I have a bunch of links, I have a bunch of videos to kind of walk you through it. So the quote sandwich, super, super easy. You can use it for any quote that you have in your paper, and it's three steps. All right, so step number one, set up the quote. So you can do this really, really easily, but what you want to do is give the, right, the reader some context. Right, so what is the quote about? What 
is the subject of that quote. So basically think about whatever information your reader needs to know in order to understand that quote, which doesn't have um, automatically does not automatically have a context, right? So you need to give them a little bit of it. All right, so um, <laughs> step number two, I just sort step number two, I just know one step, so that'll be sufficient. Anyway, step number two is give the quote. Now that one's pretty obvious, you wanna put in there, make sure you're citing it, make sure you're doing everything right with that. And then, and I'm gonna keep doing stuff apparently, step number three is give the follow-up. And I highly recommend doing this for any quote. So you are analyzing that specific quote within the context of your argument. So a question that you can use for basically any quote in any paper, and it doesn't matter if it's um, for this research paper or for another class, is um, how does that quote help your argument, right? And try to stick with that quote as much as you possibly can, all right? And that's super important. And I'm going to put an additional kind of note down here. And it's going to be um, to avoid hit and run quotes. All right, so hit and run quotes are when we see a quote in a paper and then the writer immediately moves on to something else. These are incredibly common. It, it would shock you and it shocks me sometimes about how common these are. So if you can imagine a paper that has something like this. All right, so the writer uh, is quoting someone. So um, in... I'll put it this way. In the article, Smith, so whoever the writer is, argues that blank, right? So whatever the quote is here, it would be put in there. All right, so that's the end of the quote. All right, and then I write something like, am in another section of the paper, Smith, and then I keep going from there. So. Do you see how that works? Immediately, we have a setup for the quote, we have a quote, and then in the sentence right after it, in another section of the paper, it immediately moves on to something else. It's no longer writing about the quote that it gave us. So this is a hit and run quote. So try to avoid this as much as you possibly can. So the goal is get rid of that, right? And the quote sandwich will allow you to do this because, and I'll go back up here, of this follow-up, right? So a good basic rule of thumb is to basically use probably somewhere between three and four sentences for each quote so that you're using them to support your own argument. Assume that no quote that you give your reader is going to be, um, it's going to have a self-evident meaning. It's not going to be self-explanatory. You need to explain it to us. Okay, so that's what I wanna talk about. Um, I wanted to quickly kind of zoom out so that we can see everything all at once. So the basic, um, and I'll get rid of that, make it a little bit easier. The basic notes on quotes I want us to keep in mind for these papers um, are, Oh, sorry, uh, something weird happened. All right, so quotes are great. Use them. Uh, the, you know, the major trick is to use the quotes while controlling our own voice, our own idea. And then basic ideas, right? A quote should never be for a thesis statement. It should never be as a topic sentence. It should never be the last sentence of a body paragraph. And a good rule of thumb is to have it somewhere in the middle so that you can work through it a little bit more. And then the second tip I want us to keep in mind is the quote sandwich. So again, set up the quote quote, give the quote, follow up the quote, and then by using this form, you avoid using any hit and run quotes, which again, just move on to something else and don't work through whatever quote has been provided by 
the writer. All right, those are the main points I wanted to bring up just about how to you you know using sources and kind of incorporating them into into our papers. If you have any questions about this, please please feel free to let me know, and I'd be very happy to walk you through it.